Hello. Hello, I'm Ari, and today I'm going to do an unboxing. It's not one I've done on my channel before, and I actually just heard about this box. That said, I think it's been around for quite a while. What there's so many things I'm liking about this box. It's interesting because I had, I've tried several art subscriptions and what's interesting is I get the random supplies and then I really don't like them. And I, one of the reasons I started art subscription boxes was to because watercolor and pencil is kind of my medium and what I prefer to create art in. And I thought, you know what would be neat would be to try these art subscription boxes and instead of always trying to watercolor and pencil to have these other mediums to try and to explore kind of like a fun zone instead of just a creating zone of sticking to what I know. I thought it would boost my creativity to try other boxes or other mediums. However, I've been finding myself really judgmental of all the art subscription boxes when they are not watercolor. And I started to find that really interesting. I started asking myself, there must be an art subscription box that's watercolor based. If that's really the boxes I enjoy the most, wouldn't it make sense to try a art subscription box that is in a medium I like? Rather than exploring necessarily different mediums, exploring different watercolor art. You know, I stick to fairies and people, and I guess I just go fall back on the things I like to do. And so that's the approach I'm taking with this art subscription box, is it's still a medium I enjoy working with compared to acrylics or oils that I don't enjoy working with or pastels. So it's just, an interesting concept for me to think about. I thought I needed to change mediums in order to put more fun and exploration, you know, to like boost my creativity. When in fact, maybe I just need to change the subject. Let's open this box. The box is, I'm kind of sad. They put the label right over the let's make art. So it's a Let's Make Art box. It's um, very thin. It's probably like a nine by 12 box. We'll open it this way so we don't start a fire with my candle this morning. Spoiler alert, you're good at this. So inside this box, we get a little welcome to February things to look for. Week one, week two, week three, week four. For each project, we release a tutorial. You can find the tutorials on YouTube channel, www.youtube.com. Let's make art. So whether or not you subscribe to this box, you can learn from some of their tutorials by going to their YouTube. But what I like about this box Compared to the other subscription boxes, they do four weeks of projects, and I like that. I, It's not that you can't do it with other art subscription boxes, especially the ones that come with a lot of paper, but this kind of sets you up so that you're, you have a project to turn to rather than having to come up with an idea yourself. And, and though there's a a place for that. I think it's kind of nice to just have some, a little guided um, list of activities. So like this week, this month it's seashells, 
Hard Hands, Narwhal, and Lighthouse. So we're going to have a, a landscape, an animal, skin, and seashells. So to have that already pre-planned that you can sit down and you have a project already, you if you are lacking on time and creativity at the moment, this can help you. One, it's building skills in different areas, as well as you don't have to come up with the idea yourself. And eventually, my thought is these boxes once you feel a little bit more capable in each area, you're going to start having more and more ideas of things to paint on your own. But if you're new to watercolors, this may be a really nice place to start and try these. So they do a project every week. Each project comes with step-by-step -step instructions, a reference photo, outline sheet, and two sheets of paper. So you get to try it more than once. So if you kind of, you know, you can kind of make your errors on your first one and then try it again. And that's really cool. They also come with graphite paper to transfer the image to your watercolor paper. That's nice. Um, another way to do that would be if you have a light table or a window, you'd be able to transfer those that way as well. But the graphite paper is a really nice addition. So it kind of seems like they've thought of everything. So be our friend, Facebook, YouTube, letsmakeart.com. And they have some really positive messages. So um, let's see. So the good stuff, it's paint. Oh, liquid watercolor. So we have a yellow ochre. Azure blue. We have a pink. We have orchid purple. Emerald green. And a black. So those are our colors this month. I'm not sure how big of a bottle that is. But it's, it's not empty, you know, it's not just a little bit. You get a full bottle. So maybe it's like an inch, inch and a half of liquid watercolor. So this is a dye-based paint. It's non-toxic, made in the USA. Let's make art. Dandelion Paint Company. So if you're wondering what the paint is from the Dandelion Paint Company. Again, all of our colors. All right, so that comes out. We have a natural sponge, artist sponge. Another feature is this Let's Make Art Matter. This month, we are sending some love to Tammy from California. So it's, it's pre-stamped. So there's graphite paper inside. So how sweet is this? So they pre-stamp a postcard that's watercolor paper on the back and you can send it in the mail to someone who needs a little encouragement. I think Let's Make Art Matter is just, it's really, really sweet. It's a really sweet addition to this box. So each month you can make an art piece to send someone and it comes with a little piece of graphite paper to transfer something onto this small watercolor postcard. I just, I can't wait. That's actually, I think right now my favorite thing. 
is to be able to send a note to someone and encourage them when they're going through a difficult time. I'm blown away by that. Let's make art matter and give back to people and encourage people. I think oh, it warms my heart. It really does. So that so far is my favorite part of this box is the giving back to people and to be able to send a note to someone and just show that there's people in the world that care, I think is amazing. Our first activity, let's open this one up. So this one is the one we'll do today. So, so we have four packets. It's a little, a lot of plastic. So that's, I guess that's my only complaint. I like how these are all, each project comes in its own little envelope. See that? Like how nice is that? So each project comes with its own little envelope. So we have the heart and hands this month. So we have the narwhal. My son loves the narwhals. The little unicorn of the sea. We have the lighthouse project. I guess that's kind of upside down. And then we have the seashell project. So this is what you're getting in each package is you get a, a printed, nice though, like on heavy cardstock. You're getting the seashell tutorial step-by-step -step in pictures. But remember, you can watch a tutorial on YouTube or Let's Make Art.com collections kit. Watch tutorial, paint along, outline, share. So we offer two different tutorials, a standard tutorial and a live paint along tutorial. Simply click on the box to watch either or both. So receive your kit mail and do a happy dance. Go to letsmakeart.com collections kit. Click on your project that will take you to the project page. On the project page are a series of colorful boxes like this. And this paper is really thick, sturdy watercolor paper. If you think about it, if you just do a painting this size, look how much paper you have left to try other things or to try this several times. That's so awesome. That that means not only are you getting to do this project twice, you're actually you could actually do the same project over and over. Or once you feel you've mastered this and you have it looking the way you want, you could use the paper to create other things with these same colors while you have your paints out. Or practice some of your watercolor skills like glazing and charging in color and do, doing gradients. So, you know, just don't throw out your paint. Try to use them up on extra pieces you have laying around and practice some of your lining skills to make the most out of your month and out of the paints that you have on your palette that day, whichever whichever week you're doing this. And maybe I'll try that too. Put these paints on my palette with you today to do the seashell one. Next week, I will do the next project in the box. So I'll kind of do this on a weekly basis. We'll see how it goes. But what I'm interested to find out, if we leave the water, because I don't really work with liquid watercolors much, and so I'm not familiar with whether they re-wet. I just use two paint or pans and of course you just re-wet those and get right back to work. You don't have to worry about them drying out on your palette. We won't know that for this tutorial, but I will put them on the palette, let them dry, see if when we come back, hopefully I can add that to the end of this video before I post it for the week, see what happens. See if we can re-wet those and paint something or practice with them so you know whether you can reuse the paints later. All right, so this package has three. So, and I, just a note, like here's, can you see that without the glare? They do have the outlines for like the lighthouse. So if you're not really great at drawing, it comes with an outline for you to follow there. There's a narwhal. narwhal. So you get the drawing and you can then transfer that to your 
watercolor paper. So I just wanted to show you. So here we have our narwhal. Cute. And then it has a tutorial again. Sorry, my light glare. And again, two pieces of paper. And your narwhal. So as you can see, each kit is in here. And on one hand, I really like these envelopes that it keeps each kit handy. However, what I don't like is the waste. So I would like to see maybe them place each one in like a file folder or something, something that's recyclable. Um, I don't you know, this is like that shiny kind of stiff plastic. So that's my only complaint about this whole box because everything else seems to be, you know, cardboard that you can recycle and stuff. So this is our kit. I'm, I'm really excited about this company and of course watercolor that they give back to people. The kit is, so this is a monthly subscription box. It costs $35. So you remember that over $30, I'm a little bit wary of spending that much on random supplies. However, on this kit, what I like about it is the fact that you get those four projects. You get four projects to break down during your month. And so it actually gives you something to look forward to. You just have to find the time in your schedule each week to do that. And of course, you could sit down and do all four at once if you're really feeling inspired, but that they give you extra paper that you can come back and do these projects again and again. You're going to keep the tutorial sheets. You can view the videos and paint along. And as I said, I'm using it as something to step out from what I normally paint. I don't paint narwhals. I don't paint lighthouses. I think, I just think it, it's going to give me some more experience painting things I'm not comfortable with. And so if you're just starting out or you are like me and paint in water, watercolor, but you keep it to whatever your interest and style is, maybe this would be a great box for you. I don't know. I like the encouragement it has with it. And as I said, everything seems recyclable. These, you know, these are plastic. It would be kind of nice if they were glass, but you know, it's $35, but yeah. So, I mean, so that maybe is my only complaint is some of the plastic in here. It would be nice if they found a way to contain each of these things, you know, cause it's keeping the paper and, and such clean when it's in here. And I guess it is waterproof to keep these from getting wet or damaged uh, in shipment. You know, maybe there's nothing they can do about it to make it a little bit more environmentally friendly. But that said, it's a great little box, I think. So you get eight pieces of really nice watercolor paper. You get six watercolors, and this month you have a sponge. You have four dedicated projects with the kit. So if you're not into step-by-step -step projects, then this box may not be for you. It may not be something that will work for you. But if you're into watercolors and you're interested in trying this, I'd try a box. And as I said, I haven't worked much with liquid watercolor so this will be interesting. I have some that I was going to do some reviews on but I haven't got to that yet. So all in all so far I'm impressed but you know it's always about making the art and seeing how the supplies work. So let's go get creative and put this kit to the test. All right so what did you think of the Let's Make Art Box? Is this something that you're interested in? Do you think it would serve your art needs or do you think it's a little focused? Do I really need somebody to teach me how to paint narwhals or landscapes? But I think sometimes there's benefit in, you know, this is a good form of copying. It gives you practice with someone else's art style and to see how they put the watercolor on paper. So you could kind of match your results and see what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. That said, you know, follow alongs aren't for everyone. And that, you know, may end up being the downfall of this box right now. I think it's interesting because I really kind of 
pigeonhole myself into what I paint and I just stay there. That's what I'm looking for from this box is to kind of get me out of my comfort zone and painting things that I've just have never thought about painting. It seems like every month you get a nice variety of things. This month we have the Donner Wall, we have the skin tones with the hand heart. So we have the hand heart. So, you know, that's, so that's gonna help me see how someone else lays down skin tones compared to how I do it. I just, I don't know. I, I just think it's going to be a fun month of trying this box out and seeing how it works for me to just add some interesting things into my art. I should note that Let's Make Art also has a journaling monthly kit. So if you like art journals or bullet journals, that may be a kit to check out. And I think it runs the same price every month and YouTube also has tutorials for those as well. Check them out on Instagram, Let's Make Art. Check them out on YouTube and go to their website. Again, it's letsmakeart.com. On their website, you can find some of the outlines for past boxes, and you can also buy individual kits. So let's say you don't really wanna to subscribe to a box, but you would like to try one, ki one kit. So one of these, so let's say you wanted to try the Narwhal kit. You can go into their store and just buy this narwhal kit. I, I'm i not sure what, you know, like how they do the paints or if you just get this. I guess I'll, I should look that up. Here, let me do that. So you can go on their website and buy each kit. See, there's vehicles, bunnies, birds, feathers, plants, just a ton of different things you can look up. Here's the bunny kit. $15. You can add it. It has recommended brushes on the site. Kit includes watercolor paper times two, graphite paper outline, reference card, instructions, and paint. Your brushes are not included in these kits. But here's a five minute mini rabbit watercolor tutorial on YouTube. And then here is the watch tutorial paint along, download the outline, and share. So I'm not, I'm not even in their website yet. I am just browsing and I can click on download outline and there's the outline of the bunny and I can paint along. So if you want to give it a test run and you have some watercolor paints, you can totally do that. The website has everything you need to be able to make these cute little kits. I just... You also can buy them without paint for $9 or with paint for $15. So they have the subscription boxes. There's an art journaling subscription box for $35. There's a lettering subscription box for $35. And the watercolor subscription box for $35. If you buy a single box, it is $45. So just know that if you subscribe month to month, it's a month to month subscription, you get 22% off and it auto, re auto renews. So if you want to try out one box, think about subscribing. And then once you receive your box and you've tried it out, then either cancel or continue with your subscription. So $35 if you do a subscription month to month with um, auto renew, but remember you can try one box and cancel. So that's a cheaper way to try out the subscription boxes. So just remember they have a watercolor subscription, a lettering subscription, and an art journal subscription. 
They also have a choice for a three-month watercolor gift or a three-month art journal gift or a three-month lettering gift. So I hope that was a little bit helpful just to see what they offer. I'm going to turn the light back on. So just know you can buy all this in your kit. You get the paper, the image, and the information. But no, you can also go to their website and find some of those same things without having to buy a kit. However, to have everything you need to make the supplies is a really great benefit. So having everything to or these projects is a really nice benefit to this box. And then the box, it's kind of like getting two kits free. So go to their site, look at all their gorgeous boxes and either try one or try out a month subscription and see what you think. I'm gonna be doing a month or two of these on my channel on Wednesdays. One, just to kind of help me get into, I wanna offer watercolor Wednesdays. So we're going to start here with these, just kind of get in the habit of turning hair for watercolors on Wednesdays. So look for those videos. All right. So what I'm going to do, I think, is try one just following along with their written instructions, just to see how that goes. Though they did say, watch the tutorial. All right. Um, I went to... On the bottom of this page, this it says, let's make an art.com collections kit. I could not find this seashells there yet. So I went to the subscription page um, and it's showing this month's box here. And then if I scroll down, here's the kits. Ah, so if you get this box early, like I did, Today is the end of January. It The tutorials re release once a week. So if you're really excited about your the subscription box like I am, that's a little frustrating. So I can't go on there and try this out. So I'm going to have to just wing it based on the instructions. So that's either a positive or a negative, depending on your level of how comfortable you are working with watercolors. Because the nice thing is you could try it yourself and see how close yours turns out to the artwork and following the sheet that comes inside the work along with them. And then if you're if you're struggling, then go out and watch the tutorial on each of the release dates. I you know I I guess it's too early for me to comment on that, but to me, once the box re is released, if you really are excited, it would be nice to have all those videos available at least to subscribers, because some of us only have once or twice a month we can get creative and. On the other hand, the thing I do like about that is it keeps you coming back to the box week after week and it helps you get creative on a schedule. And so again, this would be a, a really good box if you want to develop a weekly art habit. Subscribe for a couple months and get in the habit of, let's say every Saturday morning, sitting down with your coffee and doing one of these tutorials. I think that would be a positive. I mean, you can watch their YouTube and kind of do the same thing week after week because that's the most important thing is to be creative regularly. On the other hand, sometimes our life just doesn't allow that. But I want to challenge you this month to make an effort to be creative at least once a week. If art is something that used to matter to you or matters to you now, Really take the time to make it a priority this year. So out of that one piece, I now have three surfaces to play on. And that's amazing because this is really good quality paper. You can use front and back. I guess the only other thing I wish they kind of included was some 
washi tape or some painter's tape. I have my little board. It's actually not a very good board because if you can see I taped on it before and the tape pulled up the surface. So I'm, I'm thinking about coating this with something or getting my husband to coat it with something so that I have a ready board that can take water and that I can move around because being able to move it around is kind of nice. I mean, a lot of the time I just paint on my desk. However, if you, if you are doing techniques where you need it to be a little bit more upright so the paint will roll down, then having it flat isn't going to help. So it would be nice if they kind of had a tiny roll of washi tape. So if you have any washi tape, as you can see on here, I have painter's tape, just the blue kind works pretty good. I'm starting to like washi tape better because it usually comes off and I can use it again. Not usually, like I said, on this board, but. So we're gonna follow along with a little tutorial. So this one is asking us to draw these shapes. So, so this one doesn't have an outline, but we can kind of just use this. However, if you feel really intimidated about sketching, I want you to think about, you can use your window and tape this image to your window. Yes, if it's, a, if it's a bright window, this is really thick paper, but you can kind of see through enough to, to use that. But I'm just going to freehand it. So this doesn't quite, mine are too, a little too square, so I'm gonna round them out. And then I'll go back with my eraser and kind of lighten everything up. Because you don't want to have too dark of a line on there. And then I need a star. A little scallop. Not perfect. And again, any lines I don't like, I'm going to take those out of there. And overall, I'm going to lighten up my sketch. So just, it just barely shows through. Just so I kind of know where to put the paint down. So the paints we're going to need for this is the pink, the orchid, and the blue. As I said, I've never worked with liquid watercolor, so this is a first. I've been meaning to, and I've been sure. I'm gonna put four drops in. We'll start there, see what happens. I don't know how far they go or whether you're supposed to water them down. So, because I haven't done a tutorial, and blue is really intense anyway, so I am only gonna put a drop in there. So that would be something nice that if they would put, there we go, you need pink, so they give you the colors you're, you're going to need. Pink, orchid, and azure blue. Of course, you can mix some colors and create your own colored seashells. So like if you want an orange, you could mix the pink and the yellow ochre. They suggest a round two and a round six. So let's see what I have. And a round six. These look fluffy and not pointy, but... These are the silver black velvet brushes, and I do have a two and a six. I have my paint puck and some water for rinsing, and just try these paints for you. So with this trial, I'm going to put a little pile of water. Can you see the shine on that? I'll try each of those going into wet. That's a little too wet. That's directly onto dry paper. That's really brilliant color, isn't it? That is really pretty. So the pink just isn't really bright, not like the purple and the blue. You're gonna probably need more pink on your palette than those other colors, because the other colors are really intense. Got our colors. Got our palette. It's asking us to start with the curved edge section. Each section will get smaller as you work your way down. So we're gonna to wanna to place paint here and work our way 
So I'm wetting the area that I want the paint. So remember, your paint will just go where you place the water. So I didn't put, put any water here, and it's just kind of spreading. You'll just see I dropped water in, so it's the water is kind of pushing back the color. So I'm going to go in and just try to get this a little bit darker because this pink is so light. Okay, so we don't get this. So we let that first one dry. I'm skipping over because that's in watercolor. You don't want to paint the, or wet the area right next to paint. If I put paint, so if I have a wet area here, I put some paint on it. See, so it stops right where the water is. I can move it around where the water is. But the second I go in here with some water, see how that paint starts moving into that area I laid down water. So that's what would happen if you put water here. So we kind of just skip that and, and water. And then when both of these are dry, So remember, this is not an official tutorial of how to do this. This is just following their tutorial uh, that's written without help of video because the video hasn't aired yet. And if you have too much water, And the directions don't say whether or not to, whether you should wet the, the shapes or not. It just says, mix orchid and paint together for a light purple and paint your starfish. So this is just usually my approach. So wet down the paper. It's really hard for me to see my outline, so hopefully he'll turn out a good shape. So it wants me to mix a little purple. So to add some fun little texture, you can go back in and just highlight one of the sides. So I'm going in wet here. Doesn't really stay it to add in drops of orchid along the middle to give a raised appearance. See how the paint spreads. Down here they show blue too, but um, it doesn't say that um, on the instructions. So I'm just going to add. It's really spreading out. So I probably should have waited till it dried out just a little bit. But I still think it's kind of pretty. So doesn't it look exactly like theirs? Definitely not. And 
I just remembered I mixed my pink with a little purple. Paint goes where the water flows, so wherever you have water, your where we have water, your paint is going to go. That's why we skipped each section. It's a little too wet. You just want a real low sheen on your on your water, and I'm kind of rushing, so I'm. You notice the difference in the color as it dries. That's interesting. Okay, I had a little bleed. Yeah, so mine is not looking like theirs. I lost a little bit of footage, but here is kind of my completed painting. Definitely doesn't look anything like this drawing. Um, the blue really spread. So this was one of our questions, whether the paint after sitting for a day or so would reactivate. And the answer is yes. I'm just trying this little one again because because it wasn't on camera. Sort of lost that footage. So I thought I would try it again to see how the paint kind of flows wherever I add water. And even though in the instructions it says to add the orchid and azure for a light purple, I feel like it was pretty dark. So I guess I'm just going in with the pink. And I'm using my number two brush. I just like feeling like I have some control. So it'll be interesting to see when the video goes live, whether or not it gives a little bit more information on color choices. Like on this one, it had said, start with the curved edge. Well, in their picture, both this side and this side is curved. But because this was darker, that's why I started there. And for me, the colors weren't exact, you know, between the drawings. And for the starfish, kind of same thing. It said to drop in said add in drops of orchid along the middle, but I think that probably was supposed to be drop in the blue. So if you're following along exactly with their tutorial sheet, it's just know it's not exact or it's not seeming very exact. Nor does it really mention whether these should be watered down, whether you should water the surface. So you're kind of left in that way to kind of wing it yourself. I don't know that this one's turning out any better. So even though I do watercolors, this is, you know, crustaceans are outside my comfort level. And I really don't feel like mine is looking anything like theirs. <laughs> not that that's bad and not that it has to, but. So there you go. Some more horrible <laughs> watercolors. Um, 
a lot of us don't necessarily have a lot of palettes lying around. But again, another great thing to do when you have leftover paint, if you do need to wash your palette, is spend a little bit of time. Practice trying to get your lines as close to each other as possible without touching. You can practice your color changing gradients. And sometimes this is a great way to start. So if you don't know what else to do, just work on making lines. Helps you learn how to steady your hand. As you can see, I still need lots of practice. Just remember you can do this with any size brush and it pays to practice with each of your brushes. So try not to get too close where it bleeds into the next one. Keeping your lines as close to each other as possible without overlapping. Hopefully you do a little bit better at these than I am. But just know playing around with your paints is a really good way to use up what's on your palette. So just kind of practice little things with the paints. So don't just rinse this off and throw it away if you can help it. Try to put just enough paint for the art project and like I had way too much blue here. So how am I feeling about this box? I guess I... The tutorials are a little bit more difficult. I'm going to try it once their video is up. So just following along, it just seemed like a few details were not added. So if this is kind of aimed at a beginner watercolor person, I think they need a few more steps, like whether to wet the surface or not. Um, to rely on the video tutorials isn't, I don't, I, mean, I think that's not okay. This should be a complete tutorial that explains whether to wet the paper or not. It should say, you know, if it has blue in the picture, it probably should say that, um, you know, unless for some reason that's just a really dark purple, maybe I didn't go intense enough. You know, so that's definitely a possibility. So let's No, so to me, this still looks purple. Like even layering it on the blue, it still looks purple to add in texture. So to me, this was kind of a purple with a blue on top and the instructions say dropping orchid along the middle to give you a raised appearance. There should just be a little bit more information, a little bit more on whether to wet the paper or not. I, you know, I'm not sure if I went in, but I have the same, you know, maybe I should have gone in just on dry paper and maybe I would have got a little bit different result. So yeah, so that's my point is maybe that would have worked better because I kind of like that. But as I said, I've never used liquid watercolors before. So I just think, you know, even though I've done watercolors before, 
I'm not sure if you're supposed to wet the paper and it does not say it doesn't give a lot so if you have to if you get this on like I did January 27th and the video doesn't come out till February 5th on this to just on this tutorial and I want to get started painting these are not quite complete instructions and like I, I think I mentioned before to me I think at least for subscribers somehow the video should be available as soon as we get our kit I agree with having them weekly as that is a nice way to keep you creating throughout the month you know that the video comes out on the 5th so between the 5th and the 8th or something you can schedule time to sit down and watch the video and follow along with it, that tutorial that said some of us don't have a lot of time and we need to get to painting and it would be better if the tutorial sheet was just a little bit more detailed just so if this is your first time with their box or you really need a little bit more step-by-step -step, that it's covering those issues and that it states the correct colors. Um, you know, on this painting, it just seems like the blues are a lot more deep. I know when you print, you know, colors shift. So that's not a huge deal, but I think I would have liked mine in a deeper blue rather than such a bright blue. As I said, first time with crustaceans and aquatic life. But there, there you go. So if it's your first time, I hope you do better than I did. Overall, I really like this box. We'll see how next week's tutorial goes. Next week's will be the Heart and Hands tutorial. Sorry about the glare. So that will be making skin tones. And I'm kind of excited about that one because that's more my style. So when I do the video for the Hearts and Hands, I will come back after doing one more of these with the tutorial video rather than just trying to wing it from the the watercolor sheet. And again, the colors are listed here. So if you just want a quick reference rather than reading through to see which colors you need, it is down here. The size brushes you will need is listed here, but remember brushes are not included with this. So if you don't want to invest a lot, just um, Princeton has some nice four or six packs for around $8. You can pick up on Amazon or at Michaels or something like that. So, I mean, overall, I think it's it's fun. I guess I was also hoping, when dealing with a you know a watercolor box, that I wouldn't just get one type of watercolor. And understand that these watercolors are made by the Dandelion Paint Company is part of let's make art. That's why they're including these paints. Now, if you know of a box out there that offers different watercolor supplies every month, that would be one I'm really interested in. I mean, this is fine. And I, you know, like I said, I need some work with liquid watercolor. It's, you know, they go on the page so vibrant. But remember, these are dye based, not pigment based. So dye based paints, will fade over time in most cases. Usually reds and purples, just like with like hair dye, fade quicker than other colors. So that's something to consider with these paints. There, There's definitely ways to coat your painting or protect your painting so it doesn't fade. And granted, you can always digitally upload a picture of it to save to the computer or scan it into the computer. But with their dandelion paints, just know they're dye based, not pigment based. If you get this kit and you really like liquid watercolors or really concentrated liquid watercolors, this may be a direction to go in as the Doc Martens. And th this is light fast. This is, is not going to fade over time. So that's the concentrated watercolor. So I'm really liking learning with this box and 
as I said, it's something that's, that interests me, and this is what I have. I have ink spray in yellow. I have aqua ink graphics that looks a little more opaque. I have the Ecoline yellow, and then the Doc Martin yellow. So there's many options out there for liquid watercolor. And as I said, I have an interest in learning more about it. So I picked up the yellows, blues, and magentas. And some of them I already had, and some of them I've purchased in the last few months just to try out and see the difference. Maybe in the future I'll do a video covering the different watercolor inks or watercolors. So that's just, you know, to show you that there are other things on the market. This is a great way to start out and see if you like working in this medium. I loved that they picked up again, that they can dry out on your palette and you can just re-wet them and start using them again. Let them sit so you can come back to the same project maybe a couple times during the week. Like I said, now this we can work on the back. You know, the it's thick enough paper where it didn't bleed through, so practice again on the back of this if you want to, or if you love your first attempt, that's great. I don't. But I can keep practicing the techniques that they show, and I have tons of paint that will last me a long time. I mean, we'll see how, how over the course of the month, how much of this paint we use up and how much we have left over at the end of the month. But I think it'll be plenty, plenty to do several projects and experiment with. And as I said, you know, you can take time at the end or the beginning of a painting to just practice your line making and circles and writing if you're into like watercolor lettering. You know, take time to practice all that while you've got your paints out if you have the time. Or just do your tutorial and put the stuff away. But you know, try not to waste what you've paid good money for if you can. So I suggest at the very least pick up a couple really cheap dollar palettes and have them on hand so each week you can cover it and come back. You know, but I just left, the, left this sitting out like this and it's perfectly fine to re-wet and use again. So overall, I am really enjoying this so far. As I said, I, I would be interested in a watercolor kit that introduced us each month to different, different watercoloring mediums, you know, pan, you know, pans and different brands. I think that would be a fun box, but with the same premise of having tutorials and giving you a direction to go in every week. So you don't have to Put much thought in you know what you're going to create when you sit down and then once you sit down and create based on the tutorial then you can move on and paint whatever you want that day with whatever colors but you know the, i i look at this as a good way to get warmed up it's frustrating to me that i'm having troubles recreating what they had on paper but again it's not something i paint and it's a new fluid watercolor that I'm just not used to working with. So maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just bad. So <laughs> it's all right. You know, it, it's, that's, that's kind of one thing I'm looking forward to this box is just see if I can improve my skills in different areas. And what I will probably do on the back side of this is also try these with my regular watercolor paints. You know, I have pans and tube sets and just look at how they, how with my own supplies, if I can recreate this any better than I did with theirs. And of course, the more you try things, hopefully the better you get at it. So, you know, don't feel like if your first one is horrible that you need to give up, just keep trying. You know, maybe that, you know, that tutorial that month didn't resonate with you and it isn't something you're interested in painting or familiar with painting. So anyway, I, I really like this, but over a year, seeing that I'm, as far as I know, we will only be getting the Dandelion Paint Company because that only makes sense if they make the paint. 
but I definitely would like to see another box that is catering to different mediums. So if you're out there and you're listening and there, there is one, let me know about it. And if you're a company and you want a great idea, I think a watercolor box would be wonderful with these same tutorials and stuff, but offering different company, different brands, different artistic versus student grade throughout the year. And just so if a person loves watercolor, there's a box out there that meets that. But of course you can always do those things on your own. And in some ways I'm starting to lean towards no art boxes, but we will see, you know, like I still have my boxes for February coming. And I guess for me, I miss, I'm starting to miss my regular watercolors, my regular pencils, the things I use on a regular basis. I'm starting to miss that because a lot of my time is spent with these subscription boxes. So as much as I like them, I, I'm not sure if I will stay with any of them long term. But the, the one thing with this one that I'm looking forward to, if I do stick with it, is a year of watching so we can come back here next year and I can show you this and show you a year's worth of my watercolors with this company's product and tutorials and see if I improve with liquid watercolors. That said, I mean that would be fun, but I'm going to try to just get through this month first and see how I like it. And if I like the, the tutorials, I think I may be a little bit, I, I definitely need practice and I like the idea of different things, but I think the step-by-step -step, a little bit below where I'm at, I think I would have much better luck just placing the colors as I think they should be and the colors I think they should be. So know that too, you know, you don't have to follow verbatim what they say on these sheets. You can use the colors you want to and mix on your palette. I would have preferred like some peaches and orange, maybe a little green, more natural colors you Can change it up yourself. You don't have to exactly follow this, but if you're looking to learn, maybe it is better just to stick with the tutorial. I hope I kind of covered everything that I have thought about while doing this Let's Make Art box. I'm overall, I'm really happy with it. I think it's going to be a fun experience. I'm really excited about next week's um, hard hands and doing skin tones with these paints and seeing how they react that way. Just leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this box. Never heard of them up until a few weeks ago, but they've been around for a couple years, I believe, two years. I just want to be thorough in case you're new to this box as well, and hopefully my little follow-up videos will be really short, just a quick intro, show you anything else I've learned with the paints, and then a quick um, relaxing paint tutorial, or not tutorial, but a uh, walkthrough. So you can just watch me paint the hands next week and we'll go from there. I'm Ari. This is Shamelessly Creative. I got creative today. I hope you'll go get creative. Bye.